to each and every one of you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ and creation. As always, it is a tremendous honor. It is a tremendous privilege to greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you on tonight 
to this, our midweek worship service, as we are in an incredible series titled Total Life Change. Yes, we are believing God by faith uh, for a total life change for our lives to look like uh, more of Christ so that our words, our actions, and literally everything that's about us represents the kingdom and represents the kingdom well. Listen, right where you are, will you join me as we lift up a word of prayer to all of those names that are listed on our prayer list. Of course, you all know that we call them out every Sunday, uh, but we pray that you also joined us uh, earlier on Wednesday morning uh, for our Wake Up Wednesday Empowerment Prayer Call, where we also call out all of those names and all of the situations. But we also know that there are many of you you may be watching us uh, on tonight or whenever uh, you are watching and wherever you may be watching us from. Uh, we want you to know that we are believing God by faith uh, and we stand with you in prayer as we are believing that God would move and move in an incredible way in your life. Every head bow, every eye goes. Father, we bless you. God, we thank you. Father, we adore you because God, you are a great God and you are greatly to be praised. On tonight, God, it is our prayer, it is our petition that we first lift unto you prayers of thanksgiving. Father, we are ever so thankful for your goodness and your grace towards us. God, we are thankful for your love that reaches right where we are when we need it most to remind us, oh God, that you are concerned about we, your people. Thank you that your love stretches beyond our wildest imaginations and it holds us in the hollow of your hand. God, we thank you because it's your love that is continuing to send healing. It is your love that continues to send deliverance. God, it's your love that gives us a peace that your word says surpasses all understanding. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for all that you've done and even all that you're doing right now. Father, on tonight, we also lift up a prayer and a petition that you would forgive us of all of our sins. Father, we pray now that we would turn and that as we turn from everything that's not like you, we pray, Father, that we would humble ourselves, seek your face, because, Father, you've promised that you would hear from heaven and that you would heal our land. God, we're praying on tonight that we would have an encounter with you. Meet us where we are, God, that we will not only hear your voice, but, Father, allow us to feel your presence. Father, there are those who are watching on tonight or watching whenever it may be. God, I pray now that you would speak tonight that all of your people would feel you like never before. God, that we would have again, an encounter with you, O oh God, that we would engage in conversation with you, that not only will you hear from us, but Father, we pray now that you would speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, speak to our situations, that our lives will be representative of who you are to us. Father, we're praying now for your word to go forth. We're praying, God, that it will fall on good ground and that it will plant itself so that a good harvest may be produced. God, we bless you. God, we love you. God, you're welcome here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, today we are going to continue building on our total life change and further the discussion on exploring the idea of what it means to have faith and why it's so important. Hey, last week, Pastor Jones shared with us the foundations of faith and that all things that will stand can only do so with a strong foundation. For the believer, that's our faith. Because we have the assurance of God's love for us, it's there where we find our roots in God. These roots can be uh, and must be real and can only be strengthened through a personal relationship with the Father. With the strength of our faith, we gain the courage to endure challenges, trials, and struggles. We gain the courage through faith to obey God even in times when we don't always understand. Faith endures the time of testing and gives us the foundation by which we stand. 
Tonight, we're going to take a deeper look at how we can grow in and live out our faith. Over this past season, God has blessed us with new members and new leaders. And tonight, I'm excited to introduce an anointed vessel and voice of God as we welcome her to the Free Will family. While she may be new to our ministry, she is no stranger to rightly dividing the word of truth as she has served in ministry for some 20 plus years now. Free Will and all friends, please join me in welcoming to the Total Life Change series and to the Free Will family, Dr. L. Renee Gibson as she comes. Good evening. I'm excited for this opportunity to share with you all on our Free Will Missionary Baptist Church Total Life Change series, um, growing in and living out our faith. Last week, as Pastor Bird said, Pastor Jones blessed us by talking with us about the foundations of faith. We talked about Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We talked about Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith is believing God. It's relying on or having an assurance in God's testimony, the truth of God's testimony. Faith is relying upon the assurances of God. It's an unfaltering reliance on the fulfillment of God's promises, even when everything seems against fulfillment. In order to please God, we must have faith that he exists and that when we approach him, he will not only see us and hear us, but he'll come and see about us. Faith is confidence in God that leads to obedience to God. So now that we've done a little reviewing about the foundations of faith, let's talk about growing and walking in our faith. You know, new babies are taken to the doctor periodically to make sure that they're growing properly. Now, we know that all babies grow at different rates, but there's usually a certain range of height and weight that doctors expect them to reach at a certain age. Sometimes babies don't grow as we expect, and sometimes, unfortunately, some babies grow so slowly and get so far behind the curve that they're diagnosed with what's called failure to thrive. Now, failure to thrive is a serious condition which can lead to delays in physical milestones such as rolling over, sitting up, or standing or walking, and even delays in cognitive functions like talking. So what does that have to do with what we're talking about tonight? We all grow in our faith at different rates, but we need to be on the lookout for and make sure that we address spiritual failure to thrive. God expects our faith to grow. In 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 2 and 3, we find the words like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. In 2 Peter, the first chapter, verses 5 through 8, we find for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For you have possessed these qualities in increasing measure. They will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants us to crave what we need spiritually so that we will grow in our faith and in our relationship with him. If we've tasted the Lord's grace, then we should crave more of it. In looking and preparing, I thought about one of my youngest godchildren. He's a two-year-old. And a couple of weeks ago, one of my teachers brought in some pound cake for the teachers. Well, after all of the teachers had gotten all of the pound cake that they wanted, she gave me what was left and said, take it home to your godchildren. And I took it to them and I had that two-year-old on my lap and I cut him a slice of that pound cake and I broke off a piece and put it in his hand. 
he popped it in his mouth and his eyes lit up. He doesn't do a whole lot of talking, but he's got a gesture that we know very well. He started on that first bite and he said, which for him means I want more. And so I brought him off some more and then every bite that I would give him, that little hand would fly back out. It was good to him, so he wanted more. If we've tasted of the Lord's grace, of his goodness, of his mercy, then that should cause us to desire more of him. As parents, it's our goal to see our children grow, to develop and to become productive individuals. Our Heavenly Father wants us to grow in our faith and for our faith to produce other good things. Now again, we all grow in our faith at different rates and that growth manifests itself in different ways. But our faith in God through his son, Jesus Christ, should eventually cause something to be different about us. There was a song that I used to hear and it had the words in it. I don't walk like I used to walk. I don't talk like I used to talk. Something ought to be different. Let me put it in some plainer terms. If our mantra used to be, I'll go off on somebody in a half a second. Well, now, as we grow in faith, it ought to at least take us a minute or two before we grow off. If our mantra used to be that we pour tea on a regular daily basis, and for those of you that don't know, pouring tea means to gossip. If we pour tea on a daily basis, as we grow in our faith and as we grow in the Lord, we ought to at least maybe only pour tea every once in a while. But there ought to be something that's different about us as we grow in our faith. James, the second chapter, verses 14 through 19, and then we're going to look at verse 26. says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Now, let me go ahead and be very, very clear. We are not saved by works. Salvation is an act of grace by our faith in Jesus Christ, son of the living God. However, God expects our faith to grow to the point that it pushes us to good works. In other words, faith is not what I like to call a knickknack. Faith is not an item that we pick up when we need it and then put back when we don't. Faith is a living thing that should grow in us and change us for the better. Faith is a living thing that should grow in us and produce good fruit. As we grow in our faith, it ought to produce in us some more patience. We ought to be a little bit more tolerant of one another. As our faith grows in us, it should produce more caring, where we're more apt to reach out and care about the needs of our fellow man. It ought to produce more service in us. Faith is a living, growing thing, and as it grows in us, again, it should grow us to good works. So we've talked about the fact that God wants us to grow in our faith. And now let's talk a little bit about that growth process. Healthy physical growth requires nutrition and exercise. Growing and walking in our faith requires spiritual nutrition and exercise. First aspect of that spiritual nutrition is the word of God. Matthew, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse, Jesus is in the wilderness being tempted by Satan and for 40 days and 40 nights. And Satan says to him, you're the son of God. Turn these stones to bread. Why be hungry? Jesus says to him in Matthew, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse, but Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. 
2 Timothy, the third chapter, verses 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. In order for us to grow in our faith, we've got to spend some time in the word of God. In John, the 14th chapter, verse 26, Jesus said, The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I said to you. The Holy Spirit will bring back to our remembrance what we've learned, but we've got to put something in us for the Holy Spirit to bring back. I'm reminded again of another one of my godchildren. She's a little older now, but when she was a little girl, we were headed out to each taste, I think it was. And for whatever reason, I decided I wanted to have some cash. And so I told her I need to go by the ATM. And we pulled up to the ATM and I put my card in and I got some cash. And she was maybe around six or seven years old and it blew her mind. She said to me, Titi, you mean you just go to that machine and put your card in there? and they give you money, I had to do a quick life lesson, baby girl. That's not how it works. You've got to put some money in the bank in order to put the ATM card in and for them to give you some money back. The Holy Spirit will bring back to our remembrance the word of God, but we've got to put some word in us. Now, you may not know the Bible by heart from Genesis to Revelation, and you may not be able to quote chapter and verse, but every believer needs to have at least a few verses of scripture tucked into their heart so that the Holy Spirit can bring it back to your remembrance. You've got to have some word tucked in you so that when times of fear come, you can remember that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of wisdom, love and a sound mind. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You've got to put some word in you for times of sadness so that the Holy Spirit can bring back to your remembrance. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You've got to have some word tucked in you so that when chaos comes, when everything around you seems to be going wrong, the Holy Spirit can bring back to your remembrance all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. You've got to spend some time nourishing your faith with the word. And let me say this, don't make it complicated. If you don't know where to start, examine your day and look for some time that you can dedicate to the word of God. And there's no right or wrong amount of time. What matters is that you're dedicating this portion to being in fellowship with God through his holy word. If you're not sure where to start, review and meditate on the sermon text for the week or the Bible study text for the week or the Wednesday prayer call text for the week. If you're not sure where to start, subscribe to a devotional like our daily bread and not endorsing any particular in Devotional is just the one I happen to use and I like it because it comes up in my email every morning at 12.01 a.m. So when I wake up, it's there. Install a Bible app on your phone. Most of them give you a verse of the day and it comes up every morning. The important thing is make sure you start somewhere providing yourself regular spiritual nourishment from the word of God. Another key part of our spiritual nutrition for our spiritual growth is prayer. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter and the 17th verse tells us, pray without ceasing. First Chronicles 16th chapter and the 11th verse tells us to seek the Lord and his strength to seek his face forevermore. When we look in the New Testament, we find several places where Jesus took time to pray. Now, if Jesus, son of the living God, took time to pray, that ought to tell us something. Prayer is essential to our spiritual growth, to the growth of our faith. But that's a couple of things we got to talk about. Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the 18th verse encourages us to pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. 
Now, I'm going to repeat part of that verse, and I want you to pay attention to two very important words. Pray always with all prayer. Now, you know, if we're honest, we know how to have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about our troubles. And that's good. And we should. God wants us to bring our needs, our concerns, our cares, our hurts to him. But a prayer life that grows our faith has to do more than just take our request to God when we need something. A prayer life that provides spiritual nutrition involves consistent, regular prayer that goes beyond requests. In other words, we've got to talk to God regularly and say, God, I just want to acknowledge how great you are. I just want to acknowledge that you're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I just want to acknowledge that you are the almighty God. We've got to regularly talk to God and say, Lord, I just want to acknowledge that I messed up. And we've got to grow our faith by having enough of a relationship with God to be specific. Lord, I messed up by and fill in the blank. That's how he can pour out the grace that we need to help us move beyond it. Lord, I'm not coming for myself today, but I'm coming in intercession to stand in the gap for somebody else. And then sometimes we've got to spend some regular time praying to the Lord, saying, Lord, I didn't come for anything today. Now, there are things I could come for, but in this moment of prayer, I just came to say thank you. I just came to say thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for the fact that you never change. I just came to say thank you. Praying always with all prayer nourishes and helps us to grow our faith. A prayer life that provides spiritual nutrition does something else. It recognizes that prayer is about talking to and listening to God. I'm going to say that again. Prayer that nourishes our faith recognizes that prayer is about talking to and listening to God. Because, you know, far too often when we talk to God, we're like that person, you know, that never lets us get a word in edgewise. We can talk to them for 10 minutes and they got 100 words to our two. But we often do that in our prayer life with God as well. I'm going to let you in on a little secret this evening. The prayer isn't always over when we say amen. We've got to take time to listen for God to respond. And now let me go ahead and let you know that God responds to different people in different ways. He knows his children. For some people, it may be an urging that seems almost audible. It may be a verse of scripture or a song that just won't let you go. It might be a word from a friend or a family member or someone else that unexpectedly speaks to your situation. It may even be something else that I hadn't thought about, but the key is you've got to spend time listening for his voice and how he responds to you. Another part of our spiritual nutrition is a significant relational group. Proverbs 27 and 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. It nourishes and strengthens our faith when we are connected to other believers who can challenge and encourage us. In the fourth chapter of Philippians, Paul encouraged the Philippian believers, the things which you learned, received, heard, and saw in me do. In the 18th chapter of the book of Acts, Priscilla and Aquila meet a young man named Apollos who has a genuine zeal for the Lord, but he doesn't quite know everything that he needs to know. So they take him aside and explain to him more fully the gospel of Jesus Christ so that he can truly be effective in his ministry. It can help us to grow our faith when we link ourselves with people who can help us to grow in our Christian walk. People who we can trust to hold us accountable and help us to hold ourselves accountable. We need some people in our lives that can say to us, hey, and I know you said that you wanted to read more of your Bible. What have you read this week? What's, what spoke to you? We need people who will challenge us and encourage us to help us to grow in our faith. God put us here together for a reason. Guess what? 
if we didn't need each other, he's so much God that he could have given each and every one of us our own island, and we wouldn't know that anybody else existed. But since he put us here together, he wants us to grow together. So we've talked about spiritual nutrition. Let's talk a little bit about spiritual exercise. Our faith is like a muscle. The more we exercise it, the stronger it gets. Now, just like regular exercise, it's not always easy. Let me be honest with you. The first time I went to the gym and got on that treadmill, I thought that 20 minutes was going to kill me. I kept looking at that little timer saying, hurry up, because I didn't want to turn it off, but I just wasn't quite sure that I was going to make it. But the thing of it was, I did make it, and I was a little sore, but the more I went to the gym, the more I was able to do. In order for our faith to grow, we've got to exercise it. So how do we exercise? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. We exercise our faith by trusting God with every aspect of our lives and acknowledging that no area of our lives is off limits to God. All means all. It's a little word, but it's got a whole lot of power because there's nothing outside of it. That means that for us to exercise our faith, we've got to acknowledge that God is in charge in our homes. We've got to acknowledge that God is in charge of how we conduct ourselves on our jobs. We've got to acknowledge that God is in charge when it comes to our successes, to our failures, that we've got to make sure that our hopes and our dreams line up with his will for our lives. It means that we've got to trust God with everything in us, everything that belongs to us, everything that we hope for. That's spiritual exercise. Then we exercise our faith by doing things God's way, even when it's not easy. What do I mean? Give and it shall be given to you. Now, that's spiritual exercise that grows our faith because now I don't profess to be the greatest math student in the world, but now I got that math problem that says Sally had 10 apples, she gave John two. I know that Sally's supposed to have less apples than she started with. So it doesn't make sense. How do I give and have more? That's spiritual exercise when we trust God and say, Lord, you said that if I give, you would give it back to me, pressed down and shaking together, running over. So, so I'm going to exercise, Lord. I'm going to give. I got more month than money, but I'm going to give. I got 10 other things that I could do with this, but I'm going to give. That spiritual exercise that grows our faith. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Whew, that's a spiritual exercise. Maybe it's just me that ever wanted to get somebody that got me. It might be just me, but vengeance is mine, says the Lord. In other words, you get out of my business. You prayed about it. You pray about it. Do what I want you to do. Do what's right according to my word and then get out of the way. That takes faith. And it's exercise that grows our faith. Pray for those who spitefully misuse you. That spiritual exercise that grows our faith. Pray and let me not pray that yet. Yeah, yeah, don't pray that. Not that prayer. Pray that the Lord would be with them and bless them. That prayer. Pray for those who spitefully misuse you. Uh, my godmother talks about how when her daughter was a little girl, she would often say that somebody did something deliberately on purpose. And she said, no matter how many times she told her baby, they both mean the same thing. You just don't have to use those two words together. The very next time she would say, uh-uh, they did it deliberately on purpose. God says that we're supposed to pray for those who deliberately on purpose do things to hurt us. That takes faith. That's some spiritual exercise because human nature says you were mean to me. I don't want to pray for you. You hurt me. 
I don't want to pray for you. But the word of God says that the more you hurt me, the further I should get on my knees and pray that he will not only bless you, but bless your household, bless everything you touch. And that, believe me, my brothers and sisters, is spiritual exercise. But guess what? It's spiritual exercise that grows your faith. The more we exercise, the stronger our faith becomes until we're not just walking in our faith, we're power walking in. When sickness comes, we're power walking in our faith saying, I know what the doctor said, but I know what the doctor said. We're power walking in our faith when death comes because we know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We're power walking in our faith when we lose our jobs because we can say, now, God, you gave me that job and I just believe that you got another one out there for me. The more we exercise our faith, the stronger we can become in walking in our faith. So in conclusion this evening, we all need to grow in our faith. And let me go ahead and let you know it's a continual process. Sometimes it's just like when you hadn't been to the gym for a little while. You'd made it up to walking two miles on that treadmill, but now you got to drop it back down to walking one. It's a continual process, but we can continue to grow. We all grow at different rates, and that's okay, as long as we're growing. Something about us ought to become stronger, better, and wiser as we grow in our faith. And we need to do an honest self-assessment from time to time and ask ourselves, What's a little bit better about me this year than last year since I've grown in my faith? Growing and walking in our faith requires spiritual nutrition and requires spiritual exercise. So how can we take all of this that I just said and put it in something that we can easily transport to today? Number one, watch for spiritual failure to thrive. Number two, Nourish your faith by spending time in the word, spending time in prayer, and by connecting with other believers who will challenge and encourage you. And number three, exercise your faith by trusting God and obeying God. One of my favorite hymns says, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting and depending on his word. He's never failed me yet. Grow in your faith. Walk in your faith. It won't fail you because great is his faithfulness. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer this evening. Wow. Talk about an incredible lesson on tonight. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gibson, for pouring into us. Uh, it is our prayer that as she has so richly and so beautifully poured into us. Uh, we trust that God is going to pour back into her as well. Listen, I am so excited for the word that she has shared on tonight, uh, not only growing in, but living out our faith. And listen, she said it best uh, that it is a journey. It's a process. Uh, but listen, it is our prayer that you have made up in your mind, that you've made the commitment to start the process. Here is what I am confident of, that if you start the process, God will meet you right where you are and Holy Spirit will help give you guidance throughout the way. So listen, I pray that each of you have been blessed on tonight. If you are watching and you perhaps may be wondering, what can I do in order to increase my faith? What can I do in order to, as she said, exercise my faith? Listen, she's already shared uh, what I believe some incredible practical tips and tools. I want to encourage you, listen, you can go back uh, and re-listen to this message. I plan on doing it uh, because there was so much rich things that she shared. And listen, I don't want to miss any of it. And I pray that that's the same for you as well. Go back and listen to last week, Pastor Jones, who established for us, if you will, the foundations of our faith so that now Dr. Gibson came to help us build even further. 
I pray again uh, that you were blessed as I was uh, on tonight. But listen, also, if you are here and you are watching us <clears throat> and you're wondering or you're thinking through, uh, again, how can you go further in your faith, uh, in your faith uh, I want to encourage you to reach out to us. Uh, perhaps you've never received salvation. Listen, that's a start right there, right? Uh, we want you to know the God uh, in whom we are talking about having faith in. You can't have faith in him if you don't know him. Uh, and so listen, we want you to know him and not only know him for what others say about him, but listen, it's our prayer that you know God for yourself. And so if you've never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then listen, we want to encourage you to reach out to us because tonight we don't want to go any further until you've had an opportunity to do just that. If perhaps you've received salvation, but maybe you don't have a church home, then guess what? You can do just like Dr. Gibson. Uh, she connected with our ministry here through the pandemic. And listen, we'd love for you to connect with us as well. I believe that God is doing, as he has always been doing, some incredible things in and through our ministry. So listen, if you are there and you don't have a church home, you heard her say it, God never intended for us to do life alone. It was always according to God's holy plan that we be in community with each other. We don't want you to be out there by yourself. If you don't have a church home that you're connected to, we want to invite you to come and join our ministry. The same email address that's there at the bottom of your screen is the same address that you can reach out to us. Let us know who you are. Why? Because we want to pray with you and we want to celebrate with you what we are confident will be one of the best decisions you will ever make in your life. Listen, it is our prayer as we get ready to leave that while we are leaving, if you will, each other's presence, that we never leave the power and the presence of God. It is our prayer as we pray each week that God's blessings, that God's covering, and that God's favor will go with us and that it will not only be upon us, but that will, it will also be upon everything that's connected to us as well. I pray your faith. I pray that you are as faithful to God because God has been and continues to be faithful to us. Grow in your faith, live out your faith, and trust God for the rest. Have an amazing week.